All right, we're looking at our last quadratic case, and this one looks weird. We've got a power of four, power of two. Things look a little more dicey than what we've been doing, but I'm going to show you how to do it. This can still be done. Any kind of problem where you have the one power that's double the next one, and then the last one doesn't have any power at all, you can make it into a quadratic that we're familiar with. So what do I mean? First things first, what do we got? X to the four minus 7x squared plus 12. All equal to zero. We want to solve for x. Again, it looks dicey. Oh god, to the four. Never seen that before. What do we do? Well, before we looked at the idea of doing a substitution. When we were trying to factor, and we didn't want to factor this big long term, we did a substitution. We're going to do a similar case here. I don't want to have to work with x to the four and x squared. I need this to just be x normally, right? Or y? Well, let's make it y then. If I say, I'm going to let y equal x squared. Well, if we think about it, that means y squared is equal to x squared squared. And we'll see in our exponential module that this is the same as x to the 4. So for now, take my word for it, this can be that. And this can be that from our substitution. So, you know what, keep writing with yellow. Instead of x to the 4, we now have y squared minus 7y instead of x plus 12 equals 0. And this should look familiar. This is our good, or quad, uh, good old quadratic, which if we want to, we could try solving a quadratic equation, or ideally, we hope it's factorable, make our life quick. So as always, what do we got? We want to think what two numbers add to give minus 7 and multiply to give us 12. As always, focus on 12. So 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and then we start repeating again. Ignoring fractions, because at that point, just use quadratic equation. So, 1 and 12. We know we want both numbers to either be positive or negative, because we want plus 12. In fact, I can even put a plus there. So, 1 and 12, adding or subtracting both negative. Well, we're going to get 13. This, we're going to get 8. 3 and 4, though, we can get 7. But, we got to think, we want negative 7, so both will have to be negative. Negative 3, negative 4 equals negative 7. So we want both to be negative. Sure enough, negative 3 times negative 4 should give us 12. So we're good. And we can think, oops, switch back to yellow for now. This would factor out to y minus 3 and y minus 4 equals 0. But we didn't start with y, did we? So we got to switch that back in. What we have instead y is actually x squared. So we're just subbing that back in. Before we're done the problem, we got to undo our substitution. So this is actually x squared minus 3, x squared minus 4 equals 0. Problem is we want to know what x is. Not x squared, but if we think back, we looked at these difference of squares where you had something minus something. And you could factor that. The trick we used was it became the square root of the first plus the square root of the second times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. Or in other words, if I'm looking at this bracket first, this is the same as writing x, square root of x squared, minus the square root of 3, and then x, square root of x squared, plus the square root of 3. And again, it doesn't matter if I switch these. I can put one bracket in front of the other. It's up to me. And then I do the same thing for this other bracket. x plus the square root of 4, which the square root of 4 is just 2. And I'll leave it at square root of 4 for now. We can always make that into a 2 later. x minus the square root of 4. That's still equal to 0. Now we've got a lot of terms, but we've got it in terms of x, and we can set each of these equal to 0. We've seen that before. The fact that this whole thing is equal to zero would be true if this is equal to zero, or this, or this, or this, or any mix of them therein. So as long as one of these is true, the whole thing is zero. Zero times anything is zero. So that means we got 
x minus square root 3 equals 0, add square root 3 both sides. And we get x equals square root 3. This one, and I'll do a little separation. We got x plus square root 3. So we're going to subtract square root 3 from both sides. And we get x equals minus square root 3. That same pattern we always got where it's x is plus 1 and minus 1. Almost lost my mic there. And let's separate this with a line. So now we do the exact same thing over here. So again, x plus square root of 4, or in other words, plus 2 equals 0. Minus 2, minus 2, x equals minus 2. And then I'm going to go all the way down here for the last one. <laughs> Pardon my many, many lines to separate things. It's a lot of brackets, so need more room. And then we got x minus square root of two, 4, which is 2, equals 0. Add 2 to both sides. We get x equals 2. So we actually have four solutions to this problem. x equals square root of 3, minus square root of 3, minus 2, and plus 2. In fact, if you check them all out in that original equation, all of them would work, all of them would be valid, just a little bit more. Using the substitution, we are still able to solve it. So, same thing, again, if we had x to the 6 and x cubed, we'd just do a substitution y equals x cubed. As long as this one is double that one, we can do a substitution and still solve it like we have been. So, thank you.